Hello and welcome everybody, this is Sarood and I am bringing you a video on whether you should play Elder Scrolls Online in 2020. Um, I played this game for a very long time, uh, for about five years. I started on PlayStation when it was released on console, and I played there for about a year and a half or so, maybe a little bit longer. When the Xbox One X came out, I swapped over to there, played on Xbox for quite a while, um, maybe about a year or so, and then uh, I decided to jump over to PC because of the add-ons that were really nice, and the rating and everything was a bit better. And I played here for quite a while as well. Um, back in June of 2019, I stopped playing. Um, I felt the game was headed in a poor direction. And I thought that uh, the devs' priorities, to say the least, were not in line with what I wanted to play with the game. So I took a long break. I went and played Final Fantasy XIV for well over six months. Well, I picked this game back up again in early December. I bought it on sale for like 25 bucks. I got all the content. I, I got the base game and all three of the uh, chapters, uh, Somerset, Morrowind, and elsewhere. And I've been playing for about six weeks or so. Uh, and it's exactly what I remember, to be honest with you. Um, it's not changed very much at all. They have arranged some skills here and there and stuff. Um, but for the most part, it's pretty much the exact same game, um, the same exact issues of why I left in the first place. Um, and I'm just going to kind of run around the world and show you um, how this game plays a little bit. Uh, to start off with, if you're into this game just to do quests and explore the world and, uh, and do some small dungeons and stuff like that, this game is fantastic. It's very immersive. Um, the graphics, as you can see, I'm only in 1080p here, um, and the graphics are, are very good. Um, out of the top three MMOs, which in my opinion are obviously World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy XIV, and this, um, this has by far the best graphics. I think the graphics are amazing. Um, each zone is very unique to the race and culture of where you're at. So it makes you feel like you're in uh, a different place and uh, on the map, every zone that you pretty much go to. Like, I'm in a Breton land right now, and you can see the Breton architecture, the castles. It looks kind of like a medieval, like, European-type um, uh, area. Um, if I go to a different zone... Uh, like a Khajiit land. Let's go to, um, let's say, uh, Ralka here. Ralka is a Khajiit town. But uh, it makes you feel like you're somewhere else. And it's very cool. Um, the quests are all very well done. They're all voiced over. Um, they're, they're pretty interesting for the most part. Uh, I enjoy doing just about all the quests in the game, and that's pretty much what I've kind of delegated myself to doing these days in this game, is just questing, to be honest with you, because I do enjoy the questing and stuff like that. But now we're in a Khajiit land, as you can see. Um, you got the different architecture, you've got different NPCs, there, there'll be more Khajiits in the area, so it gives you that feel of you're, you're actually somewhere else. So in that regards, is the game worth buying? Yes, if you can pick it up for like 25 bucks like I did, and you want to just go around and do the quest and stuff like that, um, the game is fantastic. But, as you can see, there are a ton of bugs that have been going on for a long time in this game. And this is where I'm going to get very negative Nancy um, about this, because I'm just trying to be honest, uh, and I don't want you to waste your time if this is something that's going to bother you. Um, bugs. Um, there's quite a few bugs in it, and they've been here a long time. As you can see, um, on my bow bar, I have a bow and arrow. On my front bar, I'm supposed to have a two-hander. But my two-hander has disappeared, and in the ground is my bow. That is a bug that has been going on in this game for a very long time. Um, they have not fixed it, and uh, I don't expect them to fix it anytime soon. Um, as far as like endgame PvE and endgame PvP is concerned, uh, the game is very bad. Uh, there's a lot of latency issues. Uh, you will have frame rate drops up the yin yang. Um, you'll be in Cyrodiil, which is the open world big PvP in prime time, and you'll get stuck in load screens when you die trying to respawn. Uh, you'll have instances where the game will just freeze up for 30 seconds at a time. You'll come back, you'll be dead, um, everybody around you will be dead, and um, there's just a lot of issues uh, with latency. Um, 
and frame rate issues with this game. You lose a lot of frames in certain areas and stuff. Like, even in this town, like, this town's not even that busy, and I'll lose, like, frame rates as I'm just kind of going through the town, as you can see. Um, not horribly right now, because it is not even prime time, but um, when I'm dropping, like, 610 FPS just in a, a dead town, just kind of going around the town, um, it, it, it gets worse. It gets a lot worse. Um, so, uh, as far as, as playing, like, Endgame PVE and uh, Endgame PvP, uh, it, it, like I said, it's it's pretty bad. Uh, the frame rate issues and the lag is, is disgusting. Um, on the PVE Endgame side, there isn't a lot of trials. Um, there's literally only eight trials in this whole entire game out of five years of it being around. Uh, you have five trials, two four-man arena, like mob, spawn, um, uh, dungeons, I guess you can say, arenas, and then you have a single player arena as well. Um, so, eight trials, two of them which are kind of mini trials, is just, it's not a lot of endgame. Now, they do have a leaderboard, which is kind of cool, and they give you like weekly rewards and stuff like that, and I find that that, that to be, you know, pretty cool. Um, but it, it's not worth it. It's, it's, uh, it, it really isn't. I mean, the trials are fun. They're, uh, they're, they're difficult. Um, they'll challenge you for sure. And you have a variety of different, uh, difficulties. You can do normal, uh, regular veteran, veteran hard mode, but there's not a lot of them. It's just not a lot of content there. Uh, PVP is a little different. There's a, there's quite a bit of content and three different versions of PVP in this game. Um, but it just doesn't work very well. Uh, you have your open world Cyrodiil, which is your large open world PVP. You have Battlegrounds, which is four versus four versus four um, arena type thing where you do different types of games like Domination or Capture the Relic and Crazy King and stuff like that. And that's a lot of fun. And the frame rate and the lag issues in that are a bit better. Um, actually, they're much, much better than Cyrodiil for sure. And then you also have uh, dueling, dueling, which takes place in just the base game. Well, just any area in the regular world, you can duel people. Uh, you also have Imperial City, which is kind of a smaller scale open world PVP. It takes place in the Imperial City, which is kind of like an urban combat setting where it's a destroyed city and stuff. And you can use your terrain and stuff uh, against your opponents. And that's a lot of fun as well. Um, there's minimal frame rates loss in that and... Uh, and not too bad with the latency, but when prime time comes around and there's a bunch of people in there, you'll definitely experience it as well. So, um, but I think that's enough touched on the PVE and end game PVP stuff. Uh, in my opinion, uh, it's bad. It's not very good at all. Um, it could be great for both sides, but on PVE side, there's not enough content on PVP side. There's a lot of, uh, performance issues and, uh, it just makes it not fun to play. Um, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is the leveling system in Elder Scrolls Online. I am not a fan of the way that they do it. Um, the first level, 1 through 50, isn't too bad. That's generally where you just build your character up. Um, you do your class. You get uh, class skills, uh, your weapon and armor trait skills and passives and stuff. Um, your racial passives. You can do your... Uh, you spend stuff on crafting. You get a bunch of skill points. You get some stuff from a new... Uh, level up, um, I guess you can say, uh, not a calculator, what am I trying to say? It's a, a new system where you, when, as you level up, they give you rewards for certain levels and stuff like that. So that's actually pretty cool. They help you in that. But once you hit level 50, this starts, the champion point system. Probably the worst thing of this game has. Um, as you can see, I'm only 208 champion points out of 810. So once you hit level 50, you have another 810 levels to gain. Um, each level you get, you get a thing called a champion point, and you put it into three different trees here. As you can see, uh, you have a green tree, a blue tree, and a red tree. The red tree, for the most part, is your damage mitigation. Uh, the green tree is regain and cost, uh, cost reduction, and the blue tree is uh, um, damage increases and healing increases and stuff like that. Uh, the 810 champion points is absolutely ridiculous. The grind on this is just sickening, and they need to do something about it. Now, Zenimax has stated that they do need to, they think they do need to overhaul the champion point system. Um, in my opinion, I think they need to just get rid of it altogether. Um, I like the old veteran rank system when the game was introduced. I feel like that game, uh, that system was designed for how the game was actually meant to be played. 
the way that it is now, uh, the champion point system with all the champion points that you have and your it just it has to do so many calculations and when there's a lot of people around you and they're all doing calculations i believe that it i'm not a network expert or a coder so you know take this with a grain of salt but this is just my opinion uh with all those calculations that this game has to do uh with several people around it 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 bogs the game down and it just makes it not fun to play um on top of that like i said uh each one of these levels like this, I'm at 208 champion points. I need 140,000 experience points to get to the next one. By the time you hit 800 champion points, that's about a million XP to get an, another champion point. So it goes up every time you get a champion point. So the grind in this is ridiculous. If you're somebody that plays maybe two, three hours a night here and there, it's going to take you like a year and a half, two years to hit 810 champion points. I mean, in my opinion, that's just absolutely ridiculous. I would say more, a more uh, reasonable amount of time is like six to eight months. If you play like two to three hours a day, you know, five days a week, and it takes you six, seven months to get to, to full level, I feel like that's a reasonable amount of time. But in this game, that's not happening anytime soon. The fastest that I have ever done this grind was when I went to Xbox. It took me two and a half months, and that was doing like six to eight hours a day, pretty much, doing uh, daily uh the daily dungeons and stuff like that. And it just, it took me forever. And speaking of dungeons, uh, this is another thing. Their activity and group finder system is absolute shit. It just half the time it doesn't work. You can't just make a group and post it into a, like uh, a list of groups so that people can find your group and join it. If they meet your criteria, uh, the rewards for it are shit, which doesn't help with the leveling process. Um, the battlegrounds one, you get in with pre-made groups that'll just wipe the map with you. So that's not really that fun to do. Um, they need to do overhaul this all together like this. They had an event not too long ago, and this was before I came back. It's called the Undaunted event, and it's all solely based around the group and activity finder, and it didn't work. They had to actually cancel the fucking event because the damn, the damn, uh, group finder didn't work. Um, so, uh, yeah, th this is not good either. Um, uh, the last thing I think... I'd like to, t uh, there's a couple more things I'd like to talk about. I'm trying not to make this video like 20 minutes or no. I'm trying to make it, cut it off like 15 minutes. I'm at like 12 now. Um, the guild trader system is, in my opinion, is, is dumb. Um, how it works is guilds in the game, player guilds, will go and buy these. Um, let's see, where are they in here? Uh, the guild traders. Okay, they're this way. That's right. They're at the Bralka Way Shrine. Um, Guilds, in-game guilds that are made up of players come and buy these little traders here each week, and then they get to sell stuff out of their guild store. Oh, um, I don't know what the reasoning behind this is, but I would imagine they were trying to prevent uh, people from manipulating the market and stuff, but it didn't work. It, it doesn't do what I think it was intended to. It's a huge gold sink. Um, there's only a few top, like... Um, alliances of guilds that actually come in and buy up all these guild traders. They're very expensive. Like these ones in Ralco will probably cost you like 2 million gold plus to actually buy this. And that's per week. Um, so unless you like have a, a huge guild and um, have a lot of gold, you're not going to get it in the first place. And my major issue with it is again, for the novice player that can only play two to three hours a night here and there, um, if you were looking for a particular item, you will spend 20, 30, 40, sometimes even an hour just going around from guild trader to guild trader in each zone looking for something to buy. Now, Tamriel Trade Center on PC is very nice. It does kind of help a little bit to alleviate the time sink into it. But still, even with that, you're going from guild trader to guild trader looking for shit. And um, like I said, for the people that just only have a few hours here and there to play the game, um, it can definitely ruin uh, your immersiveness in it. So um, the guild trader system, I think, uh, needs to go. I like a, a market board instead. Um, as far as manipulation is concerned, uh, I feel like I think the reason that they did this was because they felt like you couldn't manipulate it that easily. But like I said, the top end guilds in the game um, just manipulate it anyway. You're always going to be able to manipulate the, the market system in, in video games, unfortunately. So... Well, that uh, combat system. I actually like the combat system. There, I, I have kind of a love hate relationship with it. I'll be honest with you. Um, as far as the combat system, uh, the mechanics of it, I think are great. 
Um, do I think some skills are overpowered? And I know they have nerfed a bunch of skills just because there was a lot of overpowered skills, but um, there's still a lot that, that are there. Um, but the system is pretty cool. Um, you have uh, your just basic attacks, which are your light and heavy attacks. And then you have your skills. And how the combat system works is you can use a light attack or a skill every 0.5 seconds. So in order to maximize your DPS and to... Uh, maximize just the system and overall you want to light attack and then use a skill light attack and then use a skill um, that I like about it what I have a problem with is and I also like the tab targeting or the, the non tab targeting I like the uh, the ridicule um, it's basically kind of like a first person shooter so um, it's pretty cool um, like these guys like you can actually tab target people and you'll be more inclined to hitting them um, as you can see, they're outlined, but uh, it's not tab target, and that's what I do like about it. I like the, the base of the light attack skill thing. I feel like it's fast-paced. Uh, it's exciting when you get into certain um, battles and stuff. Um, what I don't like about it is their mechanics that they use now. Um, when you do a CMX parse on like a boss or a target dummy, your light attacks will literally be the second, <laughs> second uh, damage output for that parse. Uh, to me... That is kind of dumb. Um, they did it, I believe, to increase the Magicka DPS's DPS, but I think it's half-assed backwards. Heavy attacks uh, do less damage and give you resources back, and light attacks do more damage and give you ultimate. Now, I like the ultimate regain on the light attacks. I feel like light attacks are the less risky of an attack, and should do less damage than heavy attacks do. Heavy attacks seem like they are very risky to do because you can be blocked, first of all. You can be dodge rolled. Um, or you can just flat out miss uh, with a heavy attack. So um, I feel like they have it half ass backwards, like I said. I think that the heavy attacks should take stamina or magicka away and do a ton of damage. And light attacks should... Um, do less damage, and I, I like the ultimate regen. The ultimate regen is fine, um, but that's my opinion. Uh, if you don't agree with me in the comments, just say, Sean, you're you're an idiot. Um, you have to do it this way or whatever. But uh, I think that's all I'm going to go over. Um, in my, uh, to, to recap everything, um, this game is wonderful if you just go around and kind of role play, I guess you can say. Um, just do the quest, do some small dungeons here and there, hang out with your friends. Um, it's very immersive as far as like character creation. They have a really cool uh, outfit station. You can make your character look the way you want. You have 10 playable races with a bunch of configurations on that from anywhere from tattoos to scars to hairdos and stuff like that. So if that's something that you like and you're into the Elder Scrolls Online, the game is fantastic in that regards. But when it comes to PvE, Endgame, PvP, uh, it's not very good. Um, like I said, the Guild Trader system sucks. Uh, for for no market board and the combat system is fast paced fun um, but has a lot of issues as well so those are my thoughts on the Elder Scrolls Online in 2020 if it were up to me if you can get the game for like 25 bucks sure go ahead and buy it but if you've got to spend any more than that or plan on doing end game rating in PvP um, I would just find another game in all honesty I, I'm sorry to say that because I love this game I really do have a special place in my heart for this game I've played it for so long um, I just have gotten to the point where I just feel like the company is no longer going to fix the game the way that I would like it to be played and I know that sounds selfish um, but uh, that's just the way it is for me and so if you uh, if you feel the same way if you don't um, comment in the comment section please let me know let me get your thoughts and ideas on, on what you think this game is for 2020 so uh, I'm gonna end this here um, I do appreciate you for watching if you found this informative on whether you want to play Elder Scrolls online please like and subscribe here on YouTube and hit that notification bell so when I put out new content uh, you'll know about it also I do live stream on Twitch occasionally um, I don't do it a whole lot but if you're interested in checking me out every once in a while um, head on over to Twitch uh, throw me a follow there I'd really appreciate it and have a good one everybody